Hey guys, have you ever dreamt of owning a mini station wagon with 300 horsepower? Well, there it is. Tommy and I are here in Spindel. It's the Czech Republic, and think of it as the veil vale of the Czech Republic. Isn't that right, Tommy? Absolutely, yeah, beautiful location. And in this video, we are taking a detailed look at the Mini Clubman JCW, the all four all wheel drive one, which has some updates for 2022. We're gonna take it for a ride, and let you know what it's like to live with, because we put over a thousand miles, 1600K, on this Mini Clubman. Yeah, full disclosure, Mini flew us out here uh, for a race in Germany, and then they lent us this car to go putt around in for a week and we've uh, pretty much been living out of it so we really have gotten to know it very well so shall we start with the styling Tommy absolutely now the Clubman has been around for a number of years the second generation I believe came out in around 2015 so it is not a brand new model but Mini has done a great job of keeping it relevant and keeping it fresh and this one the JCW is the high performance JCW stands for John Cooper works it's kind of like the M division for Mini this one is seen in this really cool moonwalk gray with the red roof and the red mirror caps it's got the red accents along the front end too with the JCW stripe. Overall though, a very, very good looking car and you can get this in a lot of different flavors depending on your color preferences. Now here's a secret that you may not know. This is actually the quickest Mini and I think the most powerful Mini you can buy. I know you're thinking there's a GP, but this is all wheel drive so it can actually put down those 300 horsepower and the secret to it is of course that Mini is owned by BMW and under the hood you will find well, let me pop it open, a BMW power plant, which will propel this car from zero to 60 in about four and a half seconds, Tommy? Yeah, just under five seconds, which is really, really impressive. Now, it's basically the same engine you'd find in the Top Dog Mini John Cooper Works GP, that special edition one. So 302 horsepower and then over 320 pound-feet of torque, you can see there, twin power turbo and then the JCW in 2022 is come, uh, come standard with the all four all wheel drive system with an eight speed automatic transmission of course it still does the fun stuff like how the the rings go up but the lights stay in place and uh, it's got the full clamshell ho hood but overall a very powerful setup in a surprisingly small and lightweight car now in my opinion this vehicle's chief competitor is probably the new Volkswagen Golf R that also has over 300 horsepower now the Clubman JCW starts at over $40,000 in top spec trim iconic it's like 48 grand and some change so it is not an inexpensive car but you do get a heck of a lot of power yeah the cool thing about this car is it's rock stable at speed now we've driven like I like Tommy said about 1600 kilometers and most of it on the Autobahn and Tommy we've had this up to 250 ish kilometers an hour so almost to its top end of 150 miles per hour and it was rock solid let me show you something that's really unique about this uh, and I think this is one of the only vehicles nowadays with this feature the old Suburban had it but now Mini also has it and actually let me do it the fun way because uh, I could do it this way look at that it's barn doors Tommy one of the iconic Clubman design features it really is a very cool thing to see in 2022 I want to give a shout out to Mini as well so this is why we are here we checked out the Bulldog racing team at the 24 hours of Nuremberg and their uh, the Mini that they entered um, Bulldog of course in reference to the iconic Mini um, dog breed uh, actually it, British dog breed British Tommy. dog yeah. breed yeah <laughs> that's the that's kind of the national dog of uh, the of Great Britain, the Bulldog. Uh, so uh, it was a team that was independent of Mini, but uh, they took on the race anyway. Uh, and unfortunately, they didn't finish. Uh, the car got hit a few times and took it out. Now, I got to tell you, Tommy, my favorite part of this car is not necessarily the barn door doors, even though they're kind of cool and different. But I love those exhausts, the fluted exhausts. Let me uh, let me start it up, and you can kind of give them some exhaust note. How about that? All right, that sounds good. We'll hear what this four-cylinder turbo sounds like. Now, not a huge amount of sound on the outside, but on the inside, they do a great job of kind of adding to the experience with the sound augmentation feature, uh, but you do get a few nice little burbles and pops off of the accelerator. Now, what do you think of the inside? You know, Tommy, uh, for a long time in America, small meant inexpensive, uh, but with many, what you're getting is small and expensive. In other words, you know, it's kind of like uh, 
a very small jewel. You know, there's a lot of interesting details and a lot of interesting features uh, that make it worthy of the price. So let's start with uh, the heads-up display. Now, it isn't the kind that uh, gets um, put up on the windscreen, uh, but it does pop up and it does work really well. So, you know, even though it is kind of quirky to have this little wind, this little uh, heads-up display, uh, it does work. And when you're going 150 miles an hour, it's really nice to have all your information, especially. Uh, your speed and your posted speed limit up there right in front of your eyesight because you can't take your eyes off the road. I also like uh, this. This is very straightforward. Dual controls here with a lot of cool features. So you have a sport mode. Let me go to sport. Sport. Turns everything red. Changes the exhaust note Well, a and actually, bit. give it a rev now that we're in sport mode. Right, I think it's going it. to sound pretty different. Yeah, let's try. Oh, yeah. So active exhaust as well, so it does sound a lot better. Now, a uh, couple things I want to point out. 2022 JCW, standard 8.8-inch .8 display, which looks quite nice. Dual-zone automatic climate control. It's got the heated seats. It's got the park sensors. We also have standard now. Um, if we go into the uh, driver assistance pages here, standard lane departure warning. You can turn all that on and off in there. It's got a digital cluster there in the center which displays speed and then we've got the needle on the left there for the tack and then the biggest fuel gauge I think of any car I've ever seen. Now this is an interesting number 7.8 per 100 kilometers that's how many liters it's using per 100 kilometers and that's an actually a good number 7.8 what is that in the like high 20s Tommy? Yeah I think the EPA rating is 31 on the highway and then 23 in the city and officially. That's that's impressive considering we've been driving what, at about 100 miles an hour most of the time. Uh, this I'm not a fan of. Uh, you the, know, huge, the huge fuel gauge. Yeah, it just doesn't give you enough information. Just <laughs> these giant clicks go down and I'm like really curious as to how much fuel I've got left. Well, it oh, tells I, you like the half and then you do a little bit of math, a quarter is going to be right about there. Well, there it tells you how many K till empty. So I, I suppose that's a much more precise way of judging it, but I never trust those empty gauges. They always seem to be optimistic or pessimistic. Uh, you know, I like this, a central mounted uh, a shift lever, right? It's relatively straightforward to use back for drive, forward for reverse, P for park, yep. easy peasy lemon squeezy. Uh, this is uh, BMW's previous generation iDrive, so it's not the newest one. Well, hold up. I mean, it's not iDrive at all. It's the mini system, right? Which but it's, is it's based on BMW's it's different. iDrive. I mean, it is fairly similar. It's not too hard to use, and the best part, it does have wireless Apple CarPlay, which we have been using on our trip. And then uh, one thing I do like are the shortcut buttons, which will actually show you uh, various uh, different things. Not only the audio settings, but for example, number three is programmed into sport displays right now, so you can shortcut directly to the sport displays, which is a cool thing to do. All right, should we take it for a spin? Yeah, let me show you. We got wireless charging right here. You have to hide your phone, which is never ideal. Uh, there's a little bit of a cubby right there. Uh, there's cubbies in the side. Uh, good headroom. You know, I'm 6'2 and I fit in here, and I also fit in the back, believe it or not, Tommy. Uh, when I'm in the back, you have to move these seats up a little bit to make it uh, just a little tight for the driver, but nevertheless, for a Mini, uh, it's very roomy. Uh, to me, the, the styling of this car is like, like they took the previous generation and they kind of stuck it in the oven and it kind of poofed out like the Pillsbury Doughboy, right? It's a little kind of roundy and roly-poly, uh, but that pays dividends on the inside in terms of space. Yep, for sure. It's got a usable back seat as well. We've hauled four people in this with relative comfort, although if you have four people in the luggage, as we learned, it doesn't work out super, super well. So it still is a small car. I mean, it's not really all that different from a Volkswagen Golf in terms of exterior dimensions, which is interesting because it looks quite long. It's got that long roof design, which is a great design trick where they flatten out the roof and they extend it to the very rear of the vehicle so it looks a lot bigger than it is. But on the inside, of course, if you put the seat all the way back, I mean, I'm six feet tall and I can't even touch the firewall. That's how far back you can go. Same thing as the driver. Yeah, you know, Mini does a great job in providing you ample customization right so you can have this thing in all sorts of different cool colors it's kind of like uh, jelly bellies right uh, you can just uh, go crazy with how you can mix and match them uh, I do love the red roof on this I really am a big fan of uh, you know colored roofs that are other color than the body uh, and uh, that just you know gives a lot of personality absolutely so this is downtown Spindle Tommy yeah hey, look how beautiful this is this yeah. is like a out of a fairy tale Hamlet. Are you yes. gonna go right here? Yeah, let's try. Let's try getting a little twisty road and see how it drives. 
Now, the nice thing about the uh, Mini, and you see so many Minis, especially in Germany, I think Germany is the number two market for Mini, is these roads are really very small in a lot of instances. Not like the US where you've got a excess of width. So having a small, narrow, nimble car means that you can go that much faster and have that much more fun on the little back roads, whereas something like a big Audi or a big BMW, in some instances, you'd be worried about oncoming traffic in a big way. Yeah, I, I believe that uh, the UK is still Mini's largest market, Germany's number two, which makes sense, and then, of course, America's number three. So this car makes a lot more sense, at least to me here, than it does in the land of you know, half-ton and heavy-duty trucks. That's a great point there, Dad. But overall, the ride quality is not as firm as I was kind of expecting. Uh, in previous JCWs I've driven, it really kind of beats you up. But the Clubman, I think because of the extra wheelbase, compensates for a lot of that and is a fairly smooth ride. Now, in Europe, we've had very good luck with beautiful road quality. On the few kind of broken roads we have driven over, it does get pretty harsh. Like, I don't think this would be a very good ride in, in Michigan through Detroit. But on these beautiful European roads, it's just perfect, and there's almost no body roll whatsoever. You know, I'm going to turn it around here, Tommy, because if we keep going, we'll be in Poland, believe it or not. Is that true? Yeah, it's not far to Poland, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'll make a U-turn. What's wrong with Poland? Nothing's wrong with Poland, but I don't know what their COVID restrictions are, so I, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to, you know, get stopped because... Uh, you know, we don't have or do have our COVID tests. Uh, so let's stay in the Czech Republic. Yeah, you're right exactly about the ride. It's uh, firm, it's controlled, but it's not harsh. Now, one thing good. I don't like that much is the steering is very heavy. It's fairly quick, but it is a heavy steering. And that kind of um, makes it feel less nimble than it is in some ways. It, it's just a little heavy and a little artificial. So when you're really hustling it, it doesn't quite have that kind of small, tossable, nimble feeling that like a standard hardtop does. Yeah, I think at this point it'd be f fair to say, full disclosure, that Tommy owns a classic Mini uh, and we own a GP2 as well as a Mini SE. So I guess, uh, I'm not sure if we're Mini fanboys, but we do like the brand. Yes, but I don't love the steering. <laughs> well, you but, know, you know uh, what, Tommy, you can, I mean, when it first came out, right, uh, the Germans um, bought the brand and the British were still building the classic Mini. Uh, and then slowly over the last 20 years or so, they've really made it into a much more, um, if I'm being kind, I would say Autobahn Cruiser. If I'm being a little bit critical, I would say German car. It feels like a baby BMW in a lot of ways. Well, that's a probably a good thing because the wheels aren't going to fall off after 9,000 miles. In the, <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> that's not going to overheat. But actually, this latest generation of, of, uh, of Mini and especially the Mini Hatch, um, right? The F56 models have been around since 2014 and they've proven themselves to be really, really reliable. So the older stuff, like the R56 Minis, they had a lot of issues. The R50, R53s, the quality was not very good on them, but this newest crop of Mini has just gone to the moon in terms of quality. Why don't you show them what it looks like here in, uh, in uh, Czech Vale? Or, That's or, beautiful. Or is Vale the American Spindle? <laughs> Either way, uh, I think it's all the same thing. Um, you know, the, a couple other criticisms of this car, I've spent a lot of time in these seats and they're pretty firm. Uh, I'm pretty um, European and uh, over time, my butt does get sore in them. I would like to have a little bit more cushioning, uh, but that's a small criticism, I feel. Well, I mean, the bolstering's good and the support's okay, but th these are the cloth versions with this kind of suede, and, and it, it is a very firm seat bottom. I, I do agree with you there. Wow, look at that Grand Cherokee. It's weird seeing American cars here in Europe, isn't it? ZJ Grand Cherokee in Europe. That's yeah. kind of unusual. There's a really cool Defender in my rearview mirror right now. With, oh, yeah. Um, you know, with the classic Britishness all over it. Uh, so overall, Tommy, you know, it's a... It's a niche car, obviously, uh, for a niche brand, uh, but I like it, you know. Um, you said it competes with the Golf R. I think it also probably competes to some extent with the WRX, even though it's more expensive than that. It's kind of in a weird space, right, because it's very pre premium, uh, yet um, it's very small. Well, I mean, if you want to look at, like, more expensive, more premium hot hatches, potentially, like, the Mercedes, like, the GLA, right, AMG, yeah but that's gonna be much more expensive. Now the power band on this car. I'm gonna floor it here just so you can hear it. Yep, the power band is pretty remarkable. It is, here we go. <laughs> yeah. That's quick. And that eight speed really rips shifts. Yeah. It just cruises. 
uh, and it also makes a lot of torque very low in its power band so we had to do some passing on these little twisty two-lane roads and you can just zip past practically anyone just by glancing at the accelerator yeah it's good right yeah it's really good and the brakes are incredible too these are massive brakes in this car well but i don't want to break the speed limit at least not that much uh, <laughs> it, it, it happens so quickly you don't even realize it especially with kilometers when you're used to miles per hour kilometers come at you really quickly well guys thank you for watching this video we had a lot of fun in this uh mini this this uh this past week very impressed with this road trip ability i think this is one of the best road trip minis all right turning radius isn't grand well you got these big wheels and these high performance summer tires and yeah. This is a performance machine here, Dad. <laughs> okay, yeah, you do have big fat tires. Man, that transmission just rip shifts. And yeah. that's, that's, that's already above the speed limit. Uh, you know, so I would say if you want something that your neighbors won't have, and if you're a fan of the Mini brand, uh, having the quickest and fastest Mini be a little tiny Mini station wagon is pretty cool, you know? Uh, it's one of those cars, I always keep thinking to myself, what car will be collectible 30 years from now and I gotta figure this is gonna be one of them when everything's electric, people are gonna want this little guy. Plus, all four, so you can drive it all year round. Yeah. Colorado, pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, we could be here in the winter with uh, you know all the snow they get in, it would be just fine. Uh, and then of course, obviously, the, the one that more people are gonna go for are, is the uh, Countryman, right? It's, yeah. it's basically very similar to this, it's just a little bit taller, I think. But I this, park in there. this is more of the enthusiast, enthusiast choice in yeah. a lot of ways. Yeah. You know, it's low, it's wide, it's not a crossover. Yeah, it's a good option. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching this review. And look, we're going to get to do a little bit of off-roading, Tommy. <laughs> we're going to hit a little bit of... Uh, this is about as off-road as it gets here in Europe, a little dirt yeah. parking lot. Yeah, I don't think the... I don't think the uh, yeah, they don't look too fondly on off-roading. No, I don't think the ground clearance on this on this guy is uh, good for anything more than that. All right. Get, get the Countryman if you want to go off-road. We'll see you in the next video. All right, let me turn it off. See you next time. Ciao.